probably the day I got fired from the WWE the second time, I think was what I think was a, a game changer for me because it was like my last month or two or maybe uh, my last three months in the WWE, I was bitter, angry. I never really got over the WrestleMania match getting cut. I always felt, I felt like I was wronged and the other guys all seemed to like Cody and uh, Dustin went on to be tag champs and Tenzai ended up being, it was going to be a trainer and uh, Sandow was Sandow. And I felt like I kind of got stuck holding the bag. So I was kind of real, it was a tough, and it was a tough pill to swallow and I just refused to swallow it. So, and I started thinking like, well, I, if I'm not here, I can do this and I can, I can do that. I can be an actor. I can do this. I can do whatever the hell I want. But you always say those things and then you say them enough and it gets around enough to where everyone hears like you're unhappy, you don't want to be here. So yeah. the next release comes and they release you. And then uh, when I got the call, I was uh, driving to go train at Hard Knock South. And I remember I just pulled over for the phone call because I realized it was important because Corona was calling me. And it was either one, I was going back on the road or two, I was getting canned. And, and it was the latter, I was getting canned. But um, I just remember sitting there going, okay, big mouth, what do you got? What are you going to do? Are you going to be the guy four months from now who's backstage at a house show? hoping John Laronidas walks by you or Triple H walks by you and say, hey, can I get a dark match? Or, hey, is there, is there anything I can do? You know, and you see those, you see those guys when you're there. Yeah. And it's like, there's, there's two. One, you feel sorry for them. Or two, you're kind of like, that's not going to be me. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a, it's a weird thing. You never want, and, and I get it. Hey, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. But that is one of the most you have the least leverage when you're going to them, asking them to give you a shot. And sometimes it turns around, but more often than not, you know, you get the pity thing or the the worst. And, and uh, uh, out of respect for the individual, I'll leave his name out of it. But when uh, he was trying to ask the producer if he can get a match or whatever, and the guy just said, I don't have time for this. I'm busy. And then he's got to stand there with everyone looking at him. And I was like, that is not going to be me. Mm -hmm. So um and then I was like what am I going to do you know of course and then impact called me the next day and then I you know I started doing uh tv shows and stuff but there was a lot of like the money was gone you know what I'm saying there was not a lot of money coming in like it was because WWE you go to a house show you get a piece of the house like you you can and I out earn my contract and like my every year you have a contract I probably out earn my contract probably in like three or four months so you had good money coming in, but then when it's, when you're off the road, you ain't got nothing coming in. Yeah. So you eat through stuff. You don't think about it and taxes step in. And I always had a relative with his hands out like this and uh, you want to take care of everybody. So I had to learn, I had to learn some painful lessons about you. Cause when you give everything out to people, when you don't have anything, one, they're not around. And two, they damn sure ain't bringing it back. They're like, Hey, remember that five grand you gave me two years ago? Here you go, bro. No, you know, they'll, they'll say it's not my fault. You got let go. Yeah. You know, so I had, I had a lot of, a lot of, uh, you would think at, at, you know, at my age at 30, I think it was 36 or 38, you'd think you would already have known it by then, but I had a lot of growing up to do. And after the WWE release and I had to really look at how I did business and how I caused things to happen as opposed to, cause you always want to blame the other guy. When you get fired, you always want to blame, it's the, you know, it's Vince's fault. It's Triple H's mm -hmm. fault, Stephanie's fault. You know, you want to blame all so they had nothing to do with it. I did it. And I had to go back to what I talk about in my book about my grandmother said, it's not what happens to you when you get in your mouth. It's your reaction that defines you. And the WWE is a perfect example of my reaction defining how I was looked at when I was there the last, the, the last bit of my uh, time in the WWE.